and I'm here with one of the board members of IPTC and I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by David Blanchard. Thank you so much, David, for taking the time. Now, you've all been very busy pulling this great conference and exhibition together and it really has been quite sensational. We've had so many people here and I think the engagement level has been absolutely tremendous. But I'm going to let you give me that too and give me the feedback that you've been having. Give me a feel in terms of the preparation that went into this, you know, looking at the topic and then, you know, the feedback in terms of how you felt many of the sessions have gone from the ministers, the CEOs, the experts all across the board. Well, of course, in the planning of this, we're very, very aware of the, uh, the events and, and what's been going on in terms of the, uh, the general public's perception of the oil and gas industry, um, and specifically some of the things that the, the perception is about the technology and the science are what are we doing? Are we doing enough, really, to try and mitigate some of the uh, effects that our industry has on, on climate change? And the, one of the nice things about this conference and, and when we planned it is that we've had a lot of uh, CEOs come to this conference. We've had the, uh, the, the Minister of Energy here, uh, His Royal Highness Prince uh, Abdulaziz uh, bin Salman. Uh, we've had um, the CEO of Aramco. Um, and and we, we really have made an effort to try and draw out of these distinguished guests and speakers what their perspective is on our industry and how it relates uh, to, to the climate change. And they've been very open about it in their panels. They've been very open about it from their own company perspectives and from the perspective of, of countries. Uh, for example, Saudi Arabia, what they're doing and how they have actually curtailed emissions by over 20% over the last few years. So it, it's very exciting to see companies actually stepping up and being much more open and communicative about what they've been doing to try and reduce emissions. And indeed, that's probably something I think everybody agree they need to do more of, because this has been an industry, I think, that's just been busy getting on with the day-to-day -day duty of providing energy to the world and probably maybe ignoring that message. So unfortunately, the narrative sometimes has gone in another direction. But also, I think we have to come back to the facts, we have to come back to the science, and we have to really look at the fact that oil and gas and hydrocarbons is very much a mixture of you know, the, the fuel supply that's out there. And when you look at demand rising every year, day by day, year by year, we need all kinds, and oil and gas is going to be here for a while longer. Well, that's absolutely correct. And, and the, there is a, a demand out there. Uh, we, are, we used to talk about uh, supply peak. We talk about demand peak. But in fact, as the population of the world grows, the demand is going to grow. And so the, the more science and technology we can apply today to try to mitigate these emissions, the more we're going to be able to supply uh, clean energy to, to the world over the next uh, 30 to 40, 50 years. And that's really the time frame that we need to be thinking about. I mean, I think back to the last 40 years when I was in college, we used to talk about the next ice age uh, because that the data was showing us that the, the world temperature was, was actually cooling and declining. So what's happened over the last 30, 40 years is that more people have been born, more people into this, into this world. Uh, there's been lifting more people out of poverty. And so what you happen in a closed system like the, the, our Earth is, is that it just heats up. And so what can we do to, to try and, and, and avert that. And, and these companies, the science has been applied, the amount of money that this industry is allocating and dedicating to solve this problem is phenomenal. And, and it's exciting. And more people need to know about it. And also, I guess, that pace of change. You know, you look at the industry and you look back on your professional career too, and, you know, things ticked along nicely and everything got done. But do you get a feeling, I mean, or you would see it firsthand, you know, has it really sort of speed up to the point where, you know, we've got to be more agile, we've got to be quicker, we've got to make quicker decisions. Give me a feel for what you think there. Well, I, I do think it is, it is speeding up, and, and part of the reason it's speeding up is because of the technology and because of the science. It's science about not only about how to actually uh, interpret the data, uh, the, the science of computing. You know, we know like Moore's Law, every year the, the computing power doubles and doubles and doubles. That doesn't seem to be slowing down. We're talking about quantum computing now. But the fact is, is that 
the solutions and, and the, the network of, of um, individuals and the network of the hardware is such that these solutions are coming very quickly. And, and so uh, you look at what's going on in terms of even like battery technology, it's becoming a, a lot better a lot you know, for EVs, electric vehicles, uh, longer ranges. So it is, it is getting a lot better in terms of, of how quickly we can adapt to these changes. And the reason we're able, to, again, to adapt is because of the computing power, uh, the sharing of ideas, crowdsourcing information. Uh, you know, if you put that out to the general industry, we share one of the reasons we're in this, this conference today, or this week, is to share knowledge. And the more knowledge you share, the quicker you're going to come to solutions to some of these issues that we're facing today. Now talk to me about all the technical papers and talk to me about maybe a shift in, in topics on this. This is a conference, it's the International Petroleum Technology Conference. And I think one of the things you always pride yourself on, you know, is the quality and the level of technical papers that come in here from the experts in the world, from the best minds in this industry. Have you seen a shift in, in topic and perhaps solutions that have been put in place now? Well, I think there's, there's two components of it. One is where the, the technical sessions um, are really focused on the, 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 the nuts and bolts of the technology. Uh, the other part of the conference, though, is where we have the panels and where we have the executives acknowledging and openly talking about the solutions that, that are needed. So uh, over the years, we've seen a shift uh, from being purely technical in terms of the nuts and bolts and, and you know, the exploration, the production, uh, looking at some of the midstream, you know, how do you build better LNG plants, to really looking about, okay, we can build a better LNG plant. Now, how do we get it from point A to point B uh, without creating so many emissions? How do we mitigate, again, uh, the, the actual process of getting the product into a form that we can make it easily deliverable to the customer? And, and so there is a change on, in emphasis within the conference uh, about how we look at the technology and what is becoming important. And that's natural, because you've seen that in other industries too, where, where you have to evolve in how you approach it. And indeed it is more of a holistic approach because I think there probably was a time when, you know, the, the engineers were just looking at engineering where there's so much more part, I think, now of the, the end product, which is so good, I think, for the industry. Everybody has a stake in the industry, I think, and we're really getting to see that and feel it. And it's, it's very healthy for the industry. Now, we're here in Saudi Arabia, the first time IPTC has come here, and it won't be the last. So this must be surely very exciting. And I know in your career, you've spent a lot of time in this region as well. So, I mean, how exciting is it that this is now back here in almost the, the center of the Middle East oil production? Well, it's, it's extremely exciting, especially for uh, the board of directors and for the organizers, the, the sponsoring societies of this event, because we've always thought about having this event occur and happen in, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, but because of various reasons, we've, we've kind of swapped around the area and, and in Southeast Asia. Here in Saudi Arabia, uh, we've been welcomed with open arms. We've gotten tremendous support from Aramco and, and the Ministry of Energy. And so we're, we're absolutely, absolutely over the top excited about this. We're looking forward to this coming back in 2022, uh, even bigger and better. Um, and, and this is, look, this is, Aramco is the, is the epicenter. I mean, Saudi Arabia is, you know, the kind of the premier producer in, in the region and has always been kind of the, the guiding light, if you will, in so many ways in terms of the oil and gas industry. So, so we're very, very pleased and very honored to be here. And, and we're very happy that things are, are changing within the kingdom that, that allow uh, a, a very, very successful uh, conference like we're experiencing now.